Hi everyone, this is Gail from Gail Julie Makes. I hope you're all well and I hope you've all had a bit of time in your crafting room. Um, it's been a while since I've done a tutorial but I have been crafting away a little bit when I've had a bit of spare time. So this was my latest piece. Now I did share this picture on um, a couple of these sort of Lavinia connected pages uh, like L Lavinia For You and um, various other ones on Facebook. And what I wanted to do, because I had a few comments about it, um, and I also responded to a couple of people that said they were struggling with the alcohol ink. So um, this is for those people. I just wanted to show you how you can achieve this sort of work. Um, I'd like to say a special shout out to Fiona, because um, Fiona did, um, after um, seeing the picture and watching some of my pre previous tutorials, she very kindly, blessed her, offered to send me some alcohol inks for free. So uh, what a sweetie. Thank you, Fiona. I'm um, looking forward to receiving those. Basically, I'm going to show you how I did this background, or close to, obviously, it's, you, you can never get exactly the same background when you're using any of the products, really. Um, but that's the beauty of it, isn't it? So, I'm using the UPO card. Now, there are various ways to um, to use your alcohol inks. I love to use them on the gel plate, as I said, but I won't be doing that one today. I just wanted to do one on the UPO. Um, because I know a lot of people like to start out that way. Now, I don't like to stamp on UPO card. I do the um, same technique as Tracy. I basically get the alcohol inks on there. When I'm happy, I'll do a lift ink pull and um, put it onto multivarious card, basically. So you can stamp onto the UPO. It takes ages to dry. So the alcohol inks will take a long time to dry. And then also your stamping will take a long time to dry. And it's recommended you use archival ink. Do not use uh, Versifying Claire. It will take forever. It also gets smudgy. So if you use the Versifying Claire, it will smudge if you're not careful. So you've got to be so precise. And I'm just like, no, I haven't got the energy for that. So, um, I mean, it does produce some lovely bold colours, but I think they just look just as nice, sort of a bit more subdued when you actually do the lifting pull. So first job then. So I've got alcohol blending solution, which I like to put in one of these um, fine tip bottles. Now you can get those from Lavinia, you get a pack of three. So basically this has got the same sort of um, fine tip lid, uh, fine tip in, there's your alcohol blending solution main pack look. Um, so you can very easily squirt it into this because this lid comes off. So I transfer it into there. I just feel like I've got more control because it's a bit smaller. Um, the alcohol lifting, like I say, is to lift out the end. So we're happy with our print, or our picture. Um, we basically put some across the side, which are the way you're doing it. Put some across here, brayer it down, and that will reactivate your inks um, enough for them to lift. Because obviously they will start to dry naturally. And then we've got some uh, various alcohol inks. Um, these are some of my favourite colours. So I've got eggplant, I've got uh, peach bellini, I've got citrus, I've got pool. Um, and I've got Patina. Um, my favourite, favourite, favourite one is uh, Honeycomb, but I can't get the lid off at the moment. Oh! <laughs> and I've also got a rust colour as well, just in case. But I think I'm going to stick with um, Paul Patina and the Peach Bellini. I think I did have a tiny bit of eggplant. Okay, so basically there's two ways you can actually layer onto your cards so what you can do is you can provide like a background colour or you can just start adding your alcohol ink straight on for that sort of like sale like effect now this one um i did just do the actual colours straight on there like this the sell effect but you can i just want to show you you can actually get some background colour on here so this is my peach bellini um if i just want to go for like a haze in the middle I can get a clean pad on my blending tool and I can just sort of move that around. So that will give me, you know, just a base background colour to work with in the centre there. Okay. It needs to be a... Um, a clean pad though especially if you've used the alcohol lifting previously um just because the colors can again get very muddy so i'm going to leave that one on there for now uh, right so that's a bit of a background and then what we can do is start layering on top so um if i go for some pool uh, i'm gonna 
I sort of lay some of that along the bottom. I'm not squeezing the bottle at all. I am just holding it and pressing it on like that. And then we can, we'll get a bit of patina. Okay, and we'll add some of that too. Now obviously you can add on to the previous um, marks that you made, makes it a bit more interesting. And then the real sort of, the real influence here is the blending solution. So once we start bringing this in, we can just touch it onto them. Obviously if you hold it up further, it will... If, you if you're having problems, this is what I found, because um, I know some people, I saw that some people had written things like, because Tracy says just literally tap it on um, and, you know, it will, it will sort of let out one drop. Some people have been having trouble with that, so I found that as well. So especially with the, you know, the bottles of the actual alcohol ink, if you get that problem, just turn the bottle and it seems to work, yeah, like that. So if you just turn the bottle around, just rotate the bottle a little bit so you're working from the other side, it tends to work. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. I'm going to add some eggplant at the top. Okay. And again, we'll just get that moving. So obviously if you add some to that background, it will bring up those uh, cells on the background as well that you actually, you know, you um, you lay down. Because obviously it's still being reactivated by the blending solution. And you can, you know, you can get movement going like this. So these might be some dark clouds coming in or um, the more blending solution you add, the more it's going to move that ink around. So you can swish it. I quite like that for sort of like some clouds coming in, definitely, for the purple, the eggplant colour. And remember, this won't be quite as strong as well when you are actually taking it off with a lift ink. So if you think, oh, I'm really not sure about that, it's not going to be as strong anyway. And you can always add, <clears throat> excuse me, more blending solution as you go through, okay? So it's not going to be too much of an issue. I want to keep that as it is, so when I play down here now, I'm going to just make sure I'm not moving it around too much. Okay, so a bit more pull. It's great fun as well having a go with this. You just keep, you can just keep adding more over the top, and then you can keep adding more blending solution if it's too much. Also, the white as well that you can get. Um, the white alcohol ink will also sort of dumb bits down if you need to. So again, we can move it around, being careful not to move too much of that purple now though. Okay, I'm not quite so happy with this green here, so I'm just going to add some more blending solution and sort of bring it down. Okay. So again, keep adding to it. And then I'm going to bring in some more of the peach bellini because I do want that sort of sunshine. There has been some sunshine, but now the... Uh, the storm's coming in to take it over, okay? So we can add, we can kind of blend it into that bit there. So we can get a bit of a focal point going. But then I probably will bring some of this purple back. So, go, okay, just add a bit more of that. Kind of feel like need a bit more up here. So yeah, it's just judging what you want to use it for, really. I mean, I I always think if you go for, um, you say if you went for your obviously blue green tones, then you can do an auto underwater scene quite easily, can't you? Um, but if you're um, if you go for a right mix of colours, like if you're doing like pinks and greens, and then you're probably more likely going to be creating some sort of like uh, magical fairy realm or something, you know, whatever you want to do with your fairies. But it is. I would say don't push it too much with the amount of colours. Like we say about brushes as well, don't push it too much because it will, you know, it can backfire on you. You can just end up with that mud. So this is a bit too much now, this bit here. So again, I'm going to get the blending solution on and see if I can get it to sort of go back this way. 
and again you can tilt it and add more Let's go back the other way, add a bit more here. So it really is just a question of, you know, keeping at it, keep moving it till you're happy. Quite happy with that. Maybe just calm that down a bit there. Maybe add a tiny bit more. Now you can do another technique as well, which is basically you can put blending solution down first and then add your ink over the top. Now that obviously don't quite have as much control over that because you don't know where the original alcohol ink was. So, you know, it can be a bit more awkward that one. Now I'm kind of getting lots of flatness now, so I'm going to add in a bit more. Let's go for patina again. And what you can do as well is, so if I add a lot of patina in, to that area there, I can then do what we talked about, which was get your blending tool, get another, again another sort of clean side, put a bit of your alcohol lift ink on, just literally a few dabs. <clears throat> and then you can start doing this to get a more sort of mottled, a more mottled effect and you can spread some of that purple too then yeah so I think like you know these areas here are where I've kind of spread it a bit with my blending tool so I'm loving this area here now and this area here is nice so it just kind of you know breaks it down a little bit more so if you're kind of thinking it's just gone too flat there's nothing interesting about that anymore then just go in with that blending solution, with the uh, lifting, sorry, and get going. Start taking some off. Like, for example, I'm going to go to my purple last because, as you can see, it's spreading a bit more of the purple around now. But if you want to fill areas with just something really faint, then just go in there. And can you see now I'm kind of filling my, my edge area there so it's not looking quite so stark at the edges so I'm going to add a bit more uh, patina sorry a bit more of the blending solution and then I'm just going to dab it so it's got that lighter effect again not happy with this bit I'm going to go in with a bit more pull because I want a bit of contrast of colour because obviously they're very similar colour but they are still different um, and there we go, we're starting to get some interesting shapes. And this kind of helps to serve sort of stop it moving as well. So, you, you know, you've still got that big cell, but you've, you've sort of stopped it moving. So then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit more peach bellini in here. Okay. And I'm going to stop that there. So again, it will have a tinge of the green, but I'm going to stop it. I, obviously you can change your pad, change your pad as many times as you want, I just, I, I'm very low on pads basically, which is what's stopping me from doing that, but if I did have more pads, I would do that definitely. Okay, so this is starting to look really interesting to me now. So what I'm going to do is just break up, I think I'll just add maybe another bit here, and then break that up. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll see if we can just extend a bit of that there. Okay, so I'm happy with that as it is now. Um, so what I'm going to do, just put your lids on everything because you don't want that smelly. don't want smelly unless you have to put up with it. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use the alcohol lifting, as we said. So I'm going to turn it around because I find it easier doing it that way. And I'm going to get my brayer. And a piece of card to, I've got some A4 card left. I'm still waiting for my A5, annoyingly, but uh, should be here soon. And what I'm going to do, actually, is, even though I don't tend to use this one because it's got acrylic on it, I am going to have a go at using my, uh, my wider brayer because 
it just this is the one I usually use and if it's not dry if it's not as dry as it needs to be it will you'll get lines coming up so if you've got a wider brayer I recommend it if you've got an even wider one than this one I can't remember what the size this one is anyway so if you've got a wider one than that try and get one that's the same width as a UPO paper you're using basically so this is A5 try and get one that's that wide you can just pull it down once and then you won't have that problem that I have of getting the lines although it did work quite nicely on that piece you can kind of see some of them and they kind of I think it works on this one but you know it's up to you you might find that really frustrating so what I'm going to do then I'm just going to come in with an old um, an old sort of rag and I'm gonna add some more effects just with this look so I'm just I'm just basically drying it down a little bit more but I'm also getting some nice effects in there as well in that sky yeah so it just gives you a bit of something else um gives you another texture basically okay so happy with that okay and then what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna we've got to be quick with this so we're gonna rub the alcohol lifting along the top so again, this is by Ranger. We're going to put a nice even layer across the top and we're going to brayer it down as quickly as we can. OK, so if I pull this down a little bit, we're going to, you can see, look, it's going away. You might not be able to see very well. I'm putting a nice even layer on and then I'm going to pull this down and pull it down just one more time in the middle. Yeah, oh, one, one more. You can see, look, it's already started to move it. It didn't do too bad this side, but it started to move the purple, but I'm fine with that. Get the A4 on quick and then rub it. Okay, if you're not quick, it will just start to dry again. And this, like I say, will be a lot lighter than what we've actually just seen. So here we go. There we go, and that's what we've got. So it should be that way around, shouldn't it? So really pleased with that one. I think that looks lovely. Okay, so that is quite a brooding sky coming in, isn't it? Um, yeah, really pleased. So what I would do with next job, before you do anything else, is wipe your uh, brayer down, yeah? So get it rubbed off like that. Just so it doesn't sort of stay on. And also I recommend give it a clean with a baby wipe as well. Because you don't want to be leaving things like all these alcohol liftings and stuff on your brayer. So there's my clean brayer. And I've got my lovely background. So we can work with that. Okay. Um, that would make a nice um, underwater scene. Because you can have the light shining through. I actually don't have any of the... Uh, the Lavinia underwater stamps, believe it or not, but, um, you know, I'll probably get some now, I know I can get this nice effect. So that is the Upo paper, still um, still actually a little bit of alcohol ink on there, you can give it a rub down with, with a wet wipe, doesn't really get much off, but basically you can reuse this now, so you can reuse that as many times as as you like I do find probably two or three times after that I start to feel it kind of loses its mojo a little bit but it's good that you can reuse them so we've done our background really pleased with it so I hope that's helped a lot of people out this was my original one as you can see the Sun is actually on the opposite side on this one so that's something I should have mentioned um, obviously when you pull it it is going to come out on the opposite side to where you're printing it so if you're doing your sun this side if you're doing your yellow ink this side when you pull it's going to come out on the opposite side okay so just be wary of that um, so what I'm going to do basically I'm not going to print I'm not going to do exactly the same as this one because um, I don't I just want something a bit different and I see something a bit different in this one to what I saw when I did that one. I'm very much of the, I need to sort of step back from it, have a look at it, think about what sections remind me of what, obviously that's going to be your sun element. That's the uh, darker sky creeping in. This bit is going to be, um, again, it reminds me of like a bit of maybe a frozen lake. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of thinking about what it is and how I can recreate something on here okay so this is the finished piece then so this is using that same background we've just made and I, I just kind of read what it looked like to me really so the background as we said we had a bit of a night sky coming in but still some 
um, sunlight or a shaft of light coming through um, and I thought that it lent itself again to the water so I've done a bit of a reflection technique um, not doing the full reflection on this one though I felt like it would take over too much of the foreground here so what I did was just sort of shortened it and had the hedges coming in to sort of block off the castle a little bit in the reflection um, so yeah I've used pan pastels to um, really brighten that sort of orangey yellow area we had and then um, I've done my stamping added um, some uh, what was this I used element sink I think um, just as like a watercolour basically so that was the mulberry colour with some white uh, Posca pen over the top and um, just a bit of uh, the coppery colour um, oh gel pen my, my mind's gone blank on which one it was but um, yeah you can get that on Lavinia as well and then I do like to do this sort of effect in the, on the base here where I've gone through a stencil with some ink as well all of my alcohol ink pictures actually I have got this effect running through so they've all got a pathway at the base with some sort of stencil that's been um, used to highlight the path I have actually stamped Gideon the opposite way round, so if anybody wants to know about that technique, I did actually do that on my gel plate. I can do another video on that, so please drop me a comment below if you're interested in that, because Gideon usually looks this way, um, but I wanted him, th I'm in th him on this side of the picture, so, you know, I had to reverse the stamp, basically. So, you know, there's, there's various techniques in there, so if you would like to see that, let me know, drop me a comment below, and I do hope you've enjoyed this video. So if you want to subscribe to the channel, top left there is my profile picture. Um, if you hit that and then the bell and all notifications, it will let you know whenever I've got a new video coming out. Um, bottom left there is another video that I think you might like. Take care then guys, I'll see you in the next one. Keep crafting, bye for now.